All right, <clears throat> just because it's been covered in plastic for a couple months doesn't mean there isn't a lot of dust all over the place. I shot it with some air a few seconds ago, but this is the kind of dust that really needs to be wiped off completely. No troubles otherwise. And I've been thinking about in the last few days about how I want to do the fiber optics, especially on the bottom of the command console there, and most especially on the upper freezer panels there. What I had been thinking was that I could take a really long length, say 10 feet or so, thread it through here down to underneath on one of the tubes, right there actually, back again, up here, back and forth, back and forth, and then simply trim the front, trim the bottom, and I'd have it pretty much cut to the correct size. However, that is not going to work is what I realized, simply because, well, not only because these tubes are so close right there, but also there's really no way to get a flush fit on uh, on the ends of the fiber once you have it in there. So what I am going to be doing is taking out a sample uh, length and then stringing it between the top and the bottom and see how it goes from there. So I've already got a bit of fiber optic going on. There's the airlock panel there, which only has four threads, I think, or it should. I may have to cut some of those out. And then all of these guys right there are leading to this control panel. And I don't know that that's all of them. I think I still have to put threads in the bottom controls there. But everything else should be threaded. Actually, you know what? Those are done. So this whole panel is done. The computers that go up top here are done. I do have to thread the bottom there. All of this here. Three walls, pretty much. The airlock will need a couple fibers in the uh, control panel there. If I haven't totally blocked that off, I'm hoping I didn't, but it looks like I may have. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I think I puttied over the holes that I had created, so I may be able to drill new ones. And then uh, this guy here also has a few fiber optics, but not too many. So now that I'm really looking at it, there isn't all that much to do. It's definitely mostly the freezer walls. Let me see if I can dig out those computer panels right now. And here they are, nice and easy and all bagged and ready to go. I've also, it looks like, have a few extra fire extinguishers in there. There's a fire extinguisher that goes on that wall. There is another fire extinguisher that goes on this wall or this wall, one of them. And then I think there's a fire extinguisher in this back room sometimes. So they do move around. They definitely weren't consistent about the set pieces at all. That's a fact. And uh, my main task right now is to figure out if I'm going with 0.5 or 0.25 fiber for these walls here. Maybe I'll do a test fit of those guys there. Well, maybe I'll work on this here. Lots of decisions. So, let me think about it a few seconds. And, well, actually, before I think about it for a few seconds, here's the other place where we really have to look and think about how this is going to work out. There's only so much room down here to put these tubes to hold the fiber and the LEDs. The basic idea, if you haven't been watching any of the other uh, episodes, is that you throw the fiber in one end, you put the LED in the other, bam, you're done. So it's a nice simple trick rather than trying to glue fiber optics to an end of an LED. That's just silly. Of course, you could use aluminum, brass, uh, plastic if you wanted. One note that I should mention is that on the landing gear walls, I used brass and I was going to put white LEDs in those. Brass plus white does not equal white. It equals a yellowish brass color. So if you want a pure color for your LEDs and your fiber optics, be sure to go with either white plastic or aluminum because brass or any other color is going to affect the color of your LED and your fiber optics. So my main decision here is two or threefold. <coughs> My lighting on these back walls comes from bounce light cast off of these LEDs onto the inner hull there, which bounces here and gives an exceptionally smooth glow overall. If I've got a lot of fiber optic threads going all over the place blocking that light, that's going to create shadows, and I do not want that to happen. What I've been thinking about doing is channeling the fiber optics 
and by simply gluing some aluminum tubes on the back of these panels because then it'll be invisible one in there one here one there and then the fourth one in that corner that will create extra length for the fiber to travel that's not a problem in this case and it definitely beats having the shadows show up on these walls which is something I absolutely want to avoid no matter what so I have to glue those aluminum tubes in next all these lights are blinking at different rates what I'm thinking is to use two different sequencers one at a slower rate and one at a flasher, faster flashing rate if I do that what I'm probably gonna have to do is take the LEDs off board of the sequencer put them somewhere here have the sequencer board somewhere else because this is definitely going to start getting crowded really really fast and having a sequencer board sitting here even if it's this tall is definitely going to be a lot of space because there are considerations to consider down in the lower hull so like I was saying I'd have two different flashing rates one fast one slow so that way once all this is fibered up I'd take random amounts of threads from each one and throw them into random LEDs and see how the pattern looks. Essentially it's a bit of a heartbeat of the ship. So I do want to do it nice. I don't want it looking erratic. I've seen so many examples of really bad flashing rates done. And oftentimes they're just cheaping out and using a flashing RGB instead of a single color and it just looks terrible. Well, for my money at least, it looks terrible and I don't want that happening to mine so these tubes here are probably going to channel the fiber optics that are feeding off of those guys coming through here these will also have a bit of a heartbeat to them so whether it's the same sequencer going to the same place or different ones I don't know yet the LEDs here or the light panels the little light blips on the computer panels are going to be yellow over on these freezer walls, I can't quite tell if it's a cool white, a regular white, or an outright blue. It's probably not an outright blue. I'm probably going to go with the cool white because that has a bit of a blue tinge. And that is a decision I still have to make. But it's not one I have to make immediately because fibering up these guys took three to four five six hours each. I don't quite remember how that went, but it definitely took a while. And there are essentially each one of those little guys there are three of those panels right here I'll count all these up and see how many it is but it's definitely a few dozen in each yeah maybe only a few hundred total overall maybe it won't be too bad another trick I'm doing on the lighting is on the bottom of the tubes in the very first episode that's the only time it ever lit up and that's when the family was in the tubes they had a bit of a flashing pulse going on and what I am going to do is since a lot of Jupiter 2 and Lost in Space was something of a homage to Forbidden Planet and Forbidden Planet they also have uh, well they're deceleration tubes in that case but those also flash and in that case it goes uh, steady one color to another slow flashing RGBs or slow changing RGBs so I'm probably going to put one single slow changing RGB in each one of those. I've got a brass tube cut for those so I'll stick that down there, stick the LED up so it's a bit of a light blocker and that will be that. And finally, well not quite finally, the tops of these freezer tubes always have a soft white light going on them so I have to do some drilling on those pieces to open up the top so I can put an LED down in there. Well, the LED will go in the little cap top. Let me see if I can... Here it is right there. So, these little guys. i got to drill a tiny little hole in there, and a small LED will go right in there. And there's also these other tubes. Pretty much right there, the one I'm holding. Those go... There's three of them. One there, there, and right over here. Those have a Jake's bladder going on inside them. There's really no way for me to simulate that as much as I'd like to. Uh, I don't know if I'll light them. We'll see. They were only on when the freezer tubes were going, maybe. 
or before they were. I'll have to watch the episode again. And if you want to check out your own references for the lighting that goes on in this and the colors as well to a lesser degree, on YouTube look up J2 Lighting Reference, Model Man Tom, and you'll find four videos that pretty much span the two second seasons, or season two and season three, that basically I took a capture of every single time that uh, any of the back panels anywhere were shown. I skipped the first season because that's black and white, however there are some lighting references in that, RE specifically, the freezer tubes. So let me uh, put the camera down, I'm going to take a look at all this and kind of strategize and I'll catch up with you in the next installment.